Hey Holsters, how's it going, eh? Yeah, Mr. McNeating. And it is early. Because as promised, today we are doing a brisket. So when you're doing a brisket, it's an it's it's a long cook. So you want to make sure if you're planning on eating it that day, you gotta start early in the morning. If you're not, just stay up late, I guess, and finish it. A lot of times with our briskets, pork butts same way, we will actually do them overnight and put them in a hold after they hit their temperature and just let them rest because uh, for your average you know home Joe cooker you could take a brisket off the smoker once it hits 205 leave it wrapped in a paper which we'll get to later in this video wrap it in a towel put it in an ice chest with no ice just an empty ice chest put an ice chest wrapped in a towel another towel on top of it close the lid if it's a good ice chest, it'll hold that sucker at temp for a good three or four hours. We've done it for parties where we have a lot of meat, you know, and we've just got friends coming over and we're gonna be just picking and eating all day. We like to take, you know, the extra brisket, put it in there and hold it. And it's done absolutely phenomenal. We also use that method to let our brisket, briskets rest. When we pull them off, we let them rest for an hour. So we just set them in the cooler, let them stay covered up with the towel and it traps all that heat in there and it just it keeps it moist, it keeps it delicious. And we've had nothing but success with it. So anyways, getting through all that first step, we got the smoker work rolling, using Sir Pork and Brew today, put some smoke through him. We're gonna show you how to go ahead and trim this brisket up. And we'll get it all trimmed up, get it all prepped up with our seasoning. We'll head out there and throw it on Sir Pork and Brew. All right, let's trim it up, eh? Okay. So, you know, first thing, nice sharp knife. And you're just gonna try to trim off a little bit. This is actually gonna wind up being the underside. This is the, the meaty side of it. You just wanna try to trim a little bit of that extra fat off on the underside. Trust me, when I flip this thing over, you'll see there's plenty of fat to go around it. Eh? Now, you don't necessarily have to throw that away. You can render that down, make some good stuff with it. Uh, we don't do that that often. We get some of these meteor chunks, we will throw those on the smoker and just let them cook down as we're going. Uh, well, like I say, you know, just trim off the extra fat. There's, you can turn some of that into jerky if you want. Uh, some people go through a little more thorough than we tend to do, but, you know, I figured this stuff's going to make this meat just juicy. And as everybody knows, the fat is where the flavor comes from. So you don't really want to cut off too much of it. But on the underside, you will wind up having an abundance. So, I'm going to flip this sucker over. Oh, she's slimy. This is your fat cap, okay? This whole top area. Now, you want to leave a little bit. See, I'm going to cut this thing off. Throw that on her separately, make a nice little burn in section. But you want to leave some of this on there. You don't want to leave too much, but you do kind of want to square up the... You want a lot of your fat coming out the top. And we'll just trim. What I like to do is I like to get this edge fat and get her trim back to where I can see the brisket. Like I said, don't worry too much. Like if you take a good chunk of meat off, just you know season that sucker up, throw it on the smoker too. Make yourself some burn ends on the side. See, like all that. I will throw this sucker on the smoker just the way it is, and chop some of that up. Have some burn ends go with my brisket. It'll be absolutely fabulous. But you got, you know, like down here, you got this section. See how much fat you got through there. So you want to cut some of this across the top. Trim some of that back. You need to leave some fat on there because the fat is what's going to melt through and really just make them seasonings just come alive in your mouth as you're eating this brisket. So, I mean, like I said, you're not going to cut off a whole heck of a lot, but you're going to cut off a decent amount. And just, you got to see a spot there. I'll flip it around. I'll trim this edge here. I'm just going to square up this brisket. 
size of this. Right, not, not that off. And there you go. You know, and she is just, she's ready for the smoker. So, uh, if you want to. But the other thing we're going to do is we got a seasoner. So at this point, I'm going to remove one of my gloves. And I'm going to take this jug of S&P bud that I got here. Oh, yeah. And we're just going to be liberal with it. We don't use a binder. But you want to get enough on there. Get your meat coated. Now do the underside first because the underside is actually, this is the bottom of the brisket when it's on the smoker. This portion is going to be on sitting on the grease. So, go ahead and flip her over. And we'll do the top side. Same thing. Real liberal, let that get all over your meat. You're gonna rub it on. Make sure you get the edges good. We prefer using the pan when we do this, just because it helps catch all them extra seasonings. There, here I'll show you. See all that extra seasoning's gone around the edge. Now, not everybody's light wife is as beautiful and loving and caring as mine is, but when I used to season these things in the kitchen, um, that was not her favorite part because it would just go everywhere. And it winds up all over the floor. It's just, it can make a mess. And so, you know, like I said, with this, we use a pan just to help control where everything's at. I'm also going to go ahead and take a couple of these strips that I cut off from the fatter chunks, throw them in there. Now, where's the big one? Oh, that's the one. And we're going to go ahead and throw this one on there too. And I'll throw some extra seasoning. Like I said, I'm just going to go ahead and be liberal. And we'll turn a couple of these things into some delicious appetizers. We call them appetizers. I do it because it's funny and it makes my kids laugh. So, all right. So everything is seasoned, ready to go on the smoker. Uh, we're gonna head out, check open our pork and brew, make sure he's up to temp. And if he's up to temp, we're gonna get this on. We'll see you others in a little while. Okay. So our temp, 250, right around there. Brisket. Everything's ready to go. So we're gonna go load the sucker on. Okay, now that our meat's on, we got a couple, well, hours. <laughs> uh, but I mentioned when I put the meat on that the fat cap should go up. There's a, there's a large portion of people that cause arguments over this, different styles, different ways to do it. I say, what, do what works best for you. For us, we've always had the most success leaving a fat cap up. That fat renders down, not all of it. I mean, you're not going to cook all the fat out. There's a lot of fat in that brisket. But it's going to help melt. It's going to tender the meat up a little bit. And it's going to help carry the flavors through. And everybody knows the, the fat is where the flavor comes through, whether it be steak or brisket or whatever other beef you're cooking. So like I said, we prefer fat cap up. You do what works best for you on your smoker. Um, same thing with the pan. You don't have to use a pan to season it. We do. It helps the cleanup, keeps things simpler. We prefer it that way. Um, but yeah, I the barbecue's for everybody and everybody's gonna do it a little bit differently. This is the way we do it. Uh, take everything we say, you no, know, with a grain of salt. Um, and experiment. I mean, hey, the only way to make good barbecue is by making bad barbecue. And yes, I got that from that Eric Franken, <laughs> Eric Franken video, the master class thing. He says that on, <laughs> cracks me up. But he's not, he's not wrong. The only way to make good barbecue is to screw up. And trust me, we've screwed up a lot of briskets in our time, a lot of ribs, a lot of chicken. Because 
sometimes you know you got to experiment to get to where it's good so we've got her pretty well nailed down especially with our old, old sort of pork and brew here and uh we just do the things repeatedly you know practice makes perfect while well, we're getting there and there's always room for improvement you know you got something you do differently that's cool shoot us a message let us know we'll try it out heck we might even make a video about trying it out but uh anyway so briskets on uh, leave the door closed don't check it it's not going anywhere it's not going to sprout legs and run off your smoker it's going to sit there and it's going to cook so keep your temperature at 250 uh, after about three hours start checking it making sure because what's going to happen is it's going to hit a point where that's called the stall which means that the temperature has kind of plateaued it's not going to go any higher very quickly in order to get through that we will wrap it we will show you that process as well but yeah so you're going to wrap the brisket when it hits like 160 165 somewhere in that area and it's essentially going to lock all that extra heat in there it's going to steam it it's going to tenderize it and make it just the, the best brisket you've ever had in your life but the first whew, six seven hours just you can check it every couple hours if you want to but the main point you're going to keep watching is your firebox keep your firebox going keep it warm and keep your temp up and we will see you here in a little while when we wrap this brisket up all right Ozers. so our brisket is now ready to be wrapped so we're going to go ahead and show you just what we mean when we say wrap we got our butcher paper ready to go just slide this sucker off right on there now I actually just had a conversation with somebody who told me when you get butcher paper, make sure you get the 24 inch. We are uh, currently still trying to burn through this 18 inch, which is not a bad paper. I mean, it's, it's butcher paper. But uh, it just, you have to wind up wrapping the stupid things, right? Because it's not wide enough to wrap the whole thing. So you kind of. And what you're going to do, hold that sucker over like that, kind of tuck these in. Like I said, it, it wraps, but it's not like the best wrap. So you need to take the sucker, throw it back on there. Now it's wrapped. Now you're going to get through your stall, because now we just hit 165 on our brisket. So now it's going to go through the stall on this, and now you're looking for a finish temp of about 200 to 205. And that sucker is going to be tender smoky and just amazingly flavorful so we're going to close this lid get this sucker back up to temp we're good to go okay hosers come here bud okay we've been at this for a while and we're going to go ahead and i was telling you this morning you get a cooler and a couple of towels so what we're going to do is go and pull the brisket to let it rest we're going to stick it in that cooler put some towels on there let's go ahead and open up the side of old sir pork and brew here Oh yeah, look at that, sitting there wrapped. You can see the <laughs> grease along the bottom and my cameraman's coughing. We're gonna go ahead and pull this out. And like I said, we're gonna go ahead and stuff it right in this cooler. Ooh, that's got some hot grease. Hot grease on the bottom of that sucker. Then, hey, and then you stick the towel over top, close the cooler. That'll actually trap the heat inside of that thing and it can sit there and it'll simmer in its own juices for up to about three hours holding a really high temperature. Be safe eating, you're good to go. So a good cooler, a couple of towels, rock and rolling. Good. Okay, hosers, so we've let our brisket rest. We're gonna go ahead and start pulling our paper off. We're gonna go ahead and carve into this sucker. Family's getting hungry, I'm getting hungry. It's just, it's time. Let it rest for like an hour. And so let's go ahead and see what we got here. Now don't worry, you're not just gonna see me. I'm gonna show you what the finished product looks like in the paper. Oh, that is beautiful. That is beautiful. Look at this thing. Oh, look at that. The bark, the jiggle. Oh, this is gonna be beautiful. I just said, oh, camera moved. There we go. That's beautiful. Look at that smoke ring, huh? Oh yeah. And just, oh, just barely falls apart. It is gorgeous. It is a perfect cut of meat. 
it is very perfect sometimes what you run into is the front end there's less fat over top of the the flatter point of it so it gets a little bit more tender but this thing is all oh, the juices are just running out of it look at that look at that just wants to fall apart the smoke ring is beautiful juices just want to run out of it this thing is gorgeous we're gonna have some happy eaters here in a little bit so anyways we're gonna go ahead and cut the rest of this up get on out of here you holsters have a great rest of your weekend and uh like i always say don't forget the bottom if you don't haven't already go ahead and subscribe to our channel you can follow us on facebook you can follow us on twitter uh we're in and out of instagram but we are on there and if you've ever got questions anything you need to help with just want to know something basic about barbecue go ahead and reach out we're always there for your questions so go ahead and take it easy hosers and we'll catch you next time